Five on fours are an incredibly important part of the game. It happens all the time. For example, every single time a slide in recovery or in the middle of occurring, there are four of your players guarding five. When you're in transition, there are four versus five situations. On man down, if you are locking the crease, you are four versus five. In all of your five on four drills, make this your progression. First, get it around, slow motion. Allow the defense to rotate, establish their positions and their roles and communicate them. Second, play it live with pressure and rotations. If there's a player behind the net, then rotate behind. Put, make your defense really work on this. And then the third piece is start creating some movement. Make ball carriers carry, make the adjacent shallow cut, and it will create a much more dynamic environment for both sides of the ball to develop. This five on four setup is a top, top, wing, wing, X offensive setup that simulates a one behind three, two and is a fundamental part of playing defense. So it's going to be a staple drill for you. Let's start off with our communication. Balls with M1. D1 says, I've got ball. D2, I've got left. D3, I've got right, D4, I've got two, I'm splitting two, whatever your terminology is, but there are four roles that they all have right now. When the ball moves, I've got ball, I've got left, D4's got right, D2, I'm splitting two, I'm splitting two. D1, I've got ball. He needs to be able to put pressure on the ball. Obviously, if M1 runs really far away, D1's got a decision to make whether to continue with the pressure or to let him go. But ball pressure is going to make a huge difference as to whether this offensive group scores a goal. Our adjacents, left and right, they have three responsibilities. One, their man. They have to be able to play the next pass. Two, skip pass. D2 has to guard the skip pass to A3. D3 has to guard the skip pass to A2. So they've got to be able to do the, play their man and get the skip pass, which is really important. And the last thing is, is they have some crease coverage responsibilities. So if somebody were to cut in here, D3 should be able to help on that. Finally, D4 has to try to split A3 and A2. He really isn't going to be able to make the skip pass plays because he'll be too far away from it, but he does have crease responsibility. He does need to be able to turn his head and see these two players. And the ability to guard more than one player is incredibly important for your defense. If everybody can guard two players or even a man and a half, your defense is going to be a lot better. Let's talk about our five on four in this situation. So many times you'll see the defense start out in a box against this formation. 
And it's not a smart way to go because inevitably this guy will step in and when one of these players, and nobody knows which one, has to rotate to it, it makes for a really long and impossible rotation. Therefore, we want to line up in a diamond against this formation. It's pretty simple. If there's an odd number of people out top, we're going to have an odd number of people out top. We don't want to box up three guys out top. It puts us out of balance in a way that's hard to recover from. So let's go through our roles. M2 has the ball. I've got ball. I've got left. He's going to have to have the skip pass down to A1. I've got right. He's going to have to have the skip pass down to A2. D4 is splitting and he's going to have to rotate the next time the ball moves. So let's say that the ball moves to here. I've got ball, I've got right, I've got left, I'm splitting two. And that's how that's going to work. Let's take a look at this formation in the rotations when the ball doesn't go through X. So if it goes over, I got ball left, right, no problem. The ball gets down, the diamond turns into a box. If the ball goes back up, okay, we're going to be able to get back into our diamond shape. The ball gets up here, I've got right, he's got the skip pass. I've got left, skip pass, and D3 split in two and is on his way up. He's splitting these two players. The ball gets back to the middle and we're back into our diamond shape again. Skip pass, skip pass, crease help, I got ball. I'm splitting two. The ball gets over here, and then all of a sudden we're going to start getting into a box situation going the other way. If the ball goes here, I've got ball left, right, two. The ball gets down. D4, who was all the way over here, now is going to be back guarding this side. I've got ball. D3's got left. D1's got right. He's getting all the way down. And D2 is splitting two. And that's going to be how your diamond box works when the ball stays in front. When the ball goes through X, it turns into a full rotation. You need to work on both of those scenarios. The final 5-on-4 setup is going to be a 2-on-2 or 5-on-a-die two, two, five setup for the offense. And this is going to be really important for the defense as well. There's more of an emphasis on crease coverage and skip passes than rotation. So, balls with M1. I got left. I got to be able to help on the crease here. I got to be helping on skip passes. I got right. D2 has to be able to help on the crease as well as on a skip pass. D4 has to cover the crease. One of the biggest keys to this drill is the combination of ball pressure and adjacent crease help so that D4 doesn't have to follow so far up. If M2 comes up there, that concept is manifested big time right here when the ball gets moved down and M2 makes this cut. D4 is going to get into this area right here. D2 is going to have to get down to cover M2. D1 is going to have to get in in the case that M2 makes a cut like this and get in a skip passing lane to M3. But if D3 doesn't put some pressure on, or force A1 farther back, there's no way that we're going to be able to cover this flash right to the ball unless D2 completely crashes in on it 
and then there's no way we get back to M3. So it's a real team effort in adjacent crease help, in ball pressure, adjacent crease help here, and backside help here.